Hi everyone and welcome to lesson three, identifying language and persuasive techniques for the article Beach Lessons by Zan Smith. Now, like I said in the last lesson, we will be focusing on this argument that I found. Uh, so he presents himself as a parent who tries his best to keep his children entertained without the use of technology, but admits that he isn't perfect. So what we need to do now is identify the language and persuasive techniques that actually support this argument that he's putting forward. So to do that, we need to think about where he actually does this in the article. Where does he present himself as someone that's trying his best and when he admits his imperfections? And as we find that part in the article, or those parts, because it could be separated, it's not always in one chunk, we want to read and highlight any words or persuasive techniques that you would deem as the author trying his best and, is, and admitting his imperfections. So because we've said this and because we've said he admits he isn't perfect, that's why we're looking for language that suggests he's trying his best and admitting his imperfections. That's why we're looking for that specific language and persuasive techniques that support those ideas. So we'll read through this first bit, and as we read, we want to try and locate those words or phrases that supports, he presents himself as a parent who tries his best to keep his children entertained without the use of technology, but admits that he isn't perfect. So during the long, wet winter we've just had, our three toddlers were cooped up in the house week after week, rarely able to escape for a run or a climb. Despite our best efforts to come up with activities and games, there were no... There was no end to the arguments and squabbling, or the constant demands for attention and novelty throughout the day. Occasionally we resorted to the TV for half an hour or so of entertainment, and half an hour of peace and quiet in the house to get dinner prepared, but it always seemed to reduce them to a kind of inertia, stopping them from interacting with one another and from engaging in more active behaviours. Although it freed me up to get something done, I never wanted it to go for more than an hour. So looking at this, this is where I've identified that he's presenting this argument. And these are the things I came up with. Rarely able to escape, despite our best efforts, no end, constant demands, resorted, reduce them to a kind of inertia. I never wanted to go for more than an hour. And I also included the image in this one because we need to remember that the image always needs to be talked about. It needs to fit into one of the arguments. So looking at this information, I've picked out certain words rather than highlighting whole sentences, which is what I want you to try and do. Pick those words that really show he's trying his best and he admits he isn't perfect because things don't always go his way. So I'm writing a list of the arguments that we've found. Um, usually you would just leave it on the article sheet. It's easy to locate. It's easier to know the context that they're in. Uh, but for this argument, we looked at he presents himself as a parent who tries his best to keep his children entertained without the use of technology, but admits that he isn't perfect. So one of the thing, uh, one of the language or persuasive techniques I found was rarely able to escape. Now in the brackets here, I've put a bit of context in there just so we keep remembering that context. Um, and that's talking about the outside world, uh, unable to get outside during the winter months. So despite our best efforts to keep the children entertained, no end to the children arguing and squabbling when they're stuck inside and can't go out to play, constant demands for attention and something to do while they're stuck inside. He's resorted to letting them watch the TV. He reduces, uh, sorry, the TV reduces them to a kind of inertia. So inertia is they do nothing or remain unchanged. And I never wanted to go for more than an hour. He's talking about his children watching TV and him allowing them that time. And the image of the children sitting still watching the television. Um, so again, we've got to remember if there's an image there, we need to talk about it. We need to identify an argument that it goes with. So the reason I wrote these down is to have a look and make sure that they actually connect with the argument that we've identified. 
and in this case they do. We want to look at him trying his best. He gives a little bit of that information about the children and how they feel that will connect to um, other parents and how they try their best to make sure that their kids are up and about and um, it's not hell at home and then that idea that they've resorted to it or that he doesn't want it to go for more than an hour with his kids watching TV. So these persuasive techniques and language used, they connect to our argument. So now it's your turn to identify language and persuasive techniques used. What you need to do is look at um, the arguments that you have identified Pick out where they're present in the article. I'd allocate one color highlighter for each different argument. That means when you're highlighting uh, words and phrases in the article, you will know uh, which argument it actually belongs to. And the next lesson we'll be looking at taking that information about the identified arguments and the examples that we found to put into a planning sheet. See you then.